Genshin's 4.1 patch will introduce new 5-star characters as well as have some anticipated reruns people have been waiting ages for. And while some people know exactly who they want, a lot of people are having trouble deciding. That's why in this video we'll go over Nervalit, Hu Tao, Venti, and Risley's strengths, weaknesses, team viability, and overall value. That way you'll know if one of these upcoming 5-stars is worth your primo gems. After I break down each character, I will let you know who is the best value for your primo gems and give you a proven strategy that will help you get the characters you really want in the future. Each of these 5 stars on the list will receive a grading from bad to great in several categories including personal damage, support capability, team flexibility, and free to play friendliness. I'll also recommend characters that would make good teammates for these 5 stars since you often need specific characters to really unlock the power of a limited 5 star. But as always, if you already know who you really want, then wish for them. This is a guide to help clarify what the 4.1 limited 5 star characters can do well and what they struggle with, so that way you'll be prepared to solve any problems that arise when you play them. Just know that Nervalit and Risley are new 5 stars and we still need to test them to fully understand how good they are, but based on the info we have, we can give them a proper evaluation. With that said, let's begin the grading with the High Drudge, the true ruler of Fontaine that's definitely 100% human, Nervalit. Nervalit is an on-field Hydro damage dealer whose playstyle revolves around charging up a seal to Kamehameha enemies with a huge blast of Hydro over several seconds. People will undoubtedly compare Nervalit to the Hydro Traveler, as they both stay on field to channel Hydro damage at enemies, both lose HP while channeling their abilities, and both literally have source water droplets that restore their HP. But the Hydro Traveler is like Squirtle using Bubble, and Nervalit is more like Mega Blastoise using Hydro Cannon. Same concept, but vastly different power levels. While playing Nervalit, you'll need a couple of seconds to charge up his special charge attack, which will then unleash a big torrent of Hydro damage in a straight line AoE at enemies. His skill and burst produce source water droplets, which will reduce the charge time needed to enter this state, allowing you to essentially enter it instantly. While using this special charged attack, Nervalit will continuously lose HP as long as his health is above 50%, and then his skill and burst will produce source water droplets, which not only help him enter that state faster, but also heal him up. And while his damage potential will be considerable, he's more likely to be a reaction driver than a hyper carry. This means that he will likely be more like a reaction driver similar to Alhatham, as opposed to a character like Zhao, who is played best when every other team member is only there to make him stronger. This means that Nervalit will likely have a decent amount of good team options like Taser, Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, and so forth. So for team building, he's likely gonna fit a very similar to role to Ayato as an on-field Hydro Driver that can also deal solid damage. Nervalit also scales off of HP, meaning he has a really nice free-to-play option in the prototype Amber and can make good use out of HP% percent substats that most other damage dealers do not want. Just a word of caution though, Nervalit is fairly mobile during his Hydro Kamehameha state, but he does not have any resistance to interruption, so he can get knocked around pretty easily, especially when fighting aggressive enemies. So how good is Monsieur Nervalit? Is he the supreme law of the land, or just another ambulance chaser? While there's still a lot of things to be tested on him, we have enough info to fairly judge this judge. Nervalit's personal damage is good to great. He's an on-field hydro damage dealer that scales off of HP similar to Yalan. His talents have pretty decent damage scaling on their own, but where he'll best shine is on reaction teams, and we'll talk more about that in the team flexibility section, but suffice it to say that you won't really want to run Nervalit as a hyper carry, but rather as an on-field DPS that applies a lot of hydro, while your off-field DPS does a ton of damage by continually making hydro reactions. Nervalit will require you to pick up orbs dropped by his skill and burst, otherwise you'll be charging up his special charge attack for way too long, so unlike characters like Hu Tao who can instantly get into their enhanced attack state when they use their skill, you'll need to do a little bit of maneuvering before you can unleash Nervalit's damage potential. Finally, his special charge attack is a straight line AoE, and it looks like it has some pretty far range, but 
If it's anything like Wander's range or auto-aim, Nerve Elite's attack range may not actually be as long or as good as it appears. Nerve Elite's support capability is bad. He is an on-field DPS, and if he's not on-field, he is not benefiting the team in any way. Luckily, he does do a good job of applying Hydro, so you don't necessarily have to build an entire team around him. Nervalet's team flexibility is good! As mentioned before, while he can do a good amount of damage on his own, he really shines when he's blasting enemies with Hydro and other team members are dealing off-field damage that's reacting with his Hydro application. Since Hydro is an incredibly flexible element, this means that he has a ton of great team options, including Electrocharged, Hyperbloom, Burgeon, Freeze, and Vaporize. That being said, there are a few caveats to building Nervalit teams. Number one, you want to make sure that team members you add can deal significant damage off-field, so characters like Fischl and Beto pair very well with him. Number two, you may find that you really want to shield with him since he doesn't have any interruption resistance unless you go for constellations, which are totally not necessary for him to be good. That means you'll likely want C1 Beto in an Electrocharge team or Toma for a Burgeon team. You may find that you can kite enemies around very easily and that a shield is not necessary, but if you're playing on mobile, then moving while holding his channeled charge attack can be a real pain. The final thing to consider is that he is not the best choice for Vaporize. Until we get another good off-field pyro DPS, Shangling remains the queen of off-field pyro application and damage. And Shangling almost always wants to be paired with Bennett for his huge attack buff that she can snapshot and because Bennett is a very good energy battery for her. But Nerve Elite's damage is based on his total HP. That means that he cannot take advantage of Bennett's buff, so running Nerve Elite in a Vaporized team would not be as efficient as running someone like Child or Ayato, who can make use of Bennett's attack buff. Nerve Elite's free-to-play friendliness is good. While Nerve Elite's best team members are going to be gacha characters like Fischl or Nahida, he does have a really good free-to-play weapon in the prototype Amber. The extra HP% percent substat increases his damage, the healing is nice since he loses some of his HP while using his special charge attack, but the extra energy is really helpful, meaning that you won't need to build as much energy recharge on him. So while he won't be great with a lot of free-to-play characters out of the box, he does work with a variety of characters because of just how useful Hydro is as an element. He also has a very nice free-to-play weapon option, making him a solid choice for free-to-play players that want a damage dealer that will get better as they get more and more characters. Nerve Elite's overall rating is good. His damage, team flexibility, and free-to-play friendliness are all good, and while he's not as overpowered as characters like Nahida and Kazuha, I think that anyone who likes him will not be disappointed in his performance. Just be aware that his playstyle is unique, and make sure to see how he feels in the test runs before polling. You'll definitely want to make sure you're okay with him rapidly losing his HP, and then using the source water droplets from his skill and burst to recover and speed up the charge attack rate for your special charge attacks. If you find you don't like this playstyle, I would not recommend pulling for him, because while his damage and team options may be good, they will not be good enough to justify pulling for him if you don't want to manage all these little things for his unique playstyle. Recommended potential teammates for Nerve Elites include Fischl, Beto, Nahida, Yao Yao, Dendro Traveler, Toma, Dea, any good shielder, any VV animo character like Kazuha Venti or Sucrose for swirl support, and really any other off-field damage dealer that works well in Freeze, Electrocharged, Hyperbloom, or Burgeon teams. Next we move on to the delightfully cheerful funeral director and Zhang Li's boss, Hu Tao. Hu Tao is all about playing on the edge between the balance of the living and the dead by sacrificing huge chunks of her HP in order to give herself a massive attack boost. Hu Tao deals great damage, but the loss of her own HP can be quite spooky, even if her burst can heal a portion of her lost health. For this reason, most people really love playing Hu Tao with a shield, but expert Hu Tao players sometimes forgo the shield for more 
damage. So how does Hu Tao fare against our other hyper carries? Well, Hu Tao's grade for personal damage is great. Hu Tao does great damage, but she really wants a Hydro character like Xing Chou or Yulan to maximize her vaporized damage potential with charged attacks. And speaking of charge attacks, you'll pretty much exclusively want to use Hu Tao's charge attacks because they deal the most damage and make the best use out of the vaporize reaction. This means you're not only going to have to manage her health, but also her stamina to really get the full value out of her. It's also important to know that Hu Tao shines against one or two enemies, but she can suffer in some AoE situations. On to support capability. Hu Tao's grade here is bad. Even though Hu Tao buffs your party's crit rate, it's not the reason that anyone brings her along to the team, and while it's possible to do some crazy numbers with Hu Tao's burst, especially in a melt comp, it's not practical outside of looking really strong for 6 seconds on TikTok. Hu Tao is like the other characters we've talked about so far, all of her value comes from her being on field and dealing damage. So now let's talk about her team flexibility. And her grade for this is okay. Hu Tao basically needs either Jing Chou or Yulan and that's kind of it. She just wants someone who can apply Hydra really quickly so that she can vaporize, but it's also really comfortable to play Hu Tao with a shield character like Zhongli or Layla. But a lot of really powerful powerful Hu Tao teams don't even use a shield character and opt for more damage instead. So while Hu Tao's teams are basically limited to some sort of vaporized team with a character like Xing Chou or other very fast hydro applicator, she does have better energy generation and self-sustain than Zhao does. Now let's talk about Hu Tao's free-to-play friendliness. Her grade for this is okay. Hu Tao can get away with running a weapon like the White Tassels even though the base attack is really low. This is because most of Hu Tao's attack is coming from her HP conversion, so having a lower base attack weapon isn't as big of a deal as it is compared to other hyper carries. And she also does well with the Black Cliff Pull and the Dragon's Bane, so her weapon options are limited. As far as team comps, she just really needs a fast Hydro Applicator, so someone like Xing Chou, and then you can just kind of throw in whatever other supports you can give her. Recommended characters to pair with Hu Tao include Xing Chou, Yulan, Zhang Li, Albedo if paired with Zhang Li, Bennett and Shangling for a few irrational team, and Sucrose and Amber if you want to amplify Hu Tao's pyro damage even more. Hu Tao's overall rating is good. Her damage is great, but she's a bit limited as far as team comps, and if you already have a few good on-field DPS characters, she's not going to drastically improve your account. But if you're looking for a good on-field DPS and like managing a lot of different aspects to maximize character output, then you might enjoy Hu Tao. Just make sure you have Xing Chou or your lawn for her. Our next 5 star on the list drinks himself silly because he doesn't have healthy coping mechanisms for his tragic past. It's Venti. The original limited 5 star used to be the most broken OP character in the entire game and he had that crown for a long time. But does this bard's song still sound as sweet? Or did his time in the sun come and go like a gentle breeze? It's time to give Venti a rating. Venti is an Animo support character, but despite that fact he can still pump out some really good damage. His skill has decent talent scaling and the hold version can create updrafts which are helpful when exploring. But his elemental burst is the real reason why Venti is as strong as he is. His burst creates a massive wind tunnel black hole that sucks up all light and middleweight enemies while dealing 20 instances of Animo damage. It's basically a black hole of doom that smaller enemies cannot escape from, allowing you to pummel them as they float above you flailing around. The burst damage alone is pretty significant, but it can also be infused with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, and when it is, it will also deal additional damage of the infused elemental type. Oh, and let's not forget the additional swirl damage that will also be happening simultaneously. What's even better is that when Venti's burst is infused with an element, it will refund 15 energy to all party members of that corresponding element, as well as 15 energy to Venti. This is a massively helpful passive ability, and it helps reduce your team's energy requirements by a lot. To top it all off, Venti can use the Viridescent set making him do incredible damage while also making your team do even more damage as well. Venti does not have a lot of downsides, but one big one is that he can be a real pain to use against heavy enemies and bosses. Super heavy enemies like Lava Trolls and Ruin Guards will not be pulled into Venti's burst unless they're frozen, and bosses cannot be pulled in or crowd controlled at all. 
This means that heavier and boss enemies can just walk outside of Venti's burst, thereby rendering it pretty much useless. Another downside is that the positioning of the burst can be pretty annoying because the auto-aim can be pretty dumb sometimes. You may find that you set up your team's skills and bursts in front of you and then you fire off Venti's burst only for it to fire off to the side, pulling enemies away from the damaging areas you set up with your other party members. This poor auto-aiming built into the burst can be mitigated with some practice, but it still happens on occasion and it is really annoying when it does happen. Venti used to be so strong that he was worth building before your main on-field damage dealer because he just hit so hard, but how does this bard hold up nearly 4 years after his release? Venti's personal damage is good to great. While it's generally better to build him with full elemental mastery for massive amounts of swirl damage, you can build him with attack percent and crit as well. The damage he brings is further amplified by the Viridescent Artifact set, which gives him a massive 60% swirl damage increase on top of shredding elemental resistances so your team hits even harder. When you take his already good talent scalings and then give him this artifact set, it easily pushes him over the edge. And if you're newer and don't have a lot of characters, Venti can easily function as a great TPS as well as a great support. Venti's support capability is great! He functions extremely well with Hydro, Cryo, Electro, and Pyro characters. His grouping capability is the best in the game. He refunds energy after his infused burst ends, and he can use the Viridescent set for more personal damage, while also making your team deal even more damage. Venti is still one of the best supports in the game, and just like Sucrose and Kazuha, he still remains as an absolute top tier Animo support that will continue to benefit players for a long time. Just note that sometimes the really small enemies that he can suck up up like specters may be pulled too high up for some melee characters to hit, so while he can work with just about everyone, his burst may actually make enemies harder to fight while they're in his black hole tornado. Venti's team flexibility is great. He does extremely well in a variety of teams, and if the team relies on Pyro, Cryo, Electro, or Hydro elements, then Venti is a great choice as a damage amplifier, enemy grouper, energy refunder, as well as being a significant source of extra damage. Even teams that don't rely on creating reactions still love Venti for the ability to shred Pyro, Cryo, Hydro, or Electro resistances with the Viridescent set, so he also has a great spot in Mono Element Team. Venti's free-to-play friendliness is great! He works well in so many different teams and you can just slot him into just about any team that uses Pyro, Cryo, Hydro, or Electro characters and he'll just work magically. He also has access to the Favonius Warbo that everyone gets from leveling up their adventure rank as a great free-to-play option to help support the team's energy needs even further. And if you have a bow like the Stringless, that works especially well on him as it not only increases his skill and burst damage, but gives him elemental mastery which increases his swirl damage even further. Venti's overall rating is great! His burst is an incredible source of damage, utility, and grouping, which is really rare. Usually, a good burst will do one of those things, but definitely not all three. He's very valuable in a ton of different team options and compositions, and he can not only deal significant damage, but also amplify your team's damage while helping their energy requirements. Honestly, the only downside to Venti is that most people will say that Kazuha is better because he amplifies damage by a greater amount, he's easier to use, and frankly, he's just a lot more fun in my opinion. But don't let that fool you, Venti is still an amazing choice, and if you don't have a character like Sucrose or Kazuha, he would make a great addition to just about anyone's account. Recommended teammates for Venti include any Pyro, Cryo, Electro, or Hydro characters. Rounding out the upcoming 5 stars is Risley, the first Cryo Catalyst character to be introduced in Genshin, and another character that makes my tongue do gymnastics whenever I try to pronounce his name. How good is this Jailer of the Fortress of Miripede? Will he arrest your Primo Gems, or should he be locked up and never released? Let's talk about Risley's kit and then give him a rating. Risley is an on-field Cryo Catalyst DPS who doles out punishment by punching enemies like Combo Food and Street Fighter. His elemental skill enhances the damage of his normal attacks, allowing you to punch them even harder while sacrificing a little bit of HP with every hit in order to do so. 
His skill lasts for 10 seconds and has a 16 second cooldown, and it also disappears if you switch out, so you'll definitely want to maximize the time you have on field after using his elemental skill. His burst is a single attack that hits 5 times in an AoE in front of him, and like all Fontaine characters, Risley sacrifices some of his HP to enhance his damage. When Risley uses his enhanced normal attacks from his elemental skill, he'll sacrifice some of his health to do more damage, but he can recover it back with one of his ascension passives. When his health is under 60%, he will gain a special ability that makes his next charged attack do 50% more damage, cost no stamina, and heal him for 30% of his max HP. You'll want to use this at the end of your rotation with Risley because it has a 5 second cooldown and it's going to be very hard to consistently meet the HP threshold and timing requirements to use it twice. So it's best to use it at the end to recover the most HP for the next rotation. Overall, Risley is pretty simple and his kit is actually very similar to Wanderer but with the added Fontinian gimmick of losing and then gaining back HP. Just use his skill, then normal attacks, then use a charge attack to heal up at the end of his rotation, and either burst at the beginning or the end of your rotation for extra damage. Risley seems to be pretty straightforward and his damage seems to be pretty decent, but his AoE potential seems to be very low, with the only real AoE coming from his elemental burst. And since you have to often fight multiple enemies at once, that's a major downside to the punishing punchy boy. With that in mind, how good is Risley? Is Genshin's first Cryo Catalyst character everything people wanted, or do his punches just not land a hit? It's time to give Risley a rating. Risley's personal damage is good and potentially great with a few caveats. His normal attack damage when enhanced by his skill is similar to Wanderer's with the added benefit that he can trigger the Melt reaction for even more damage. Risley, however, does not attack as fast as Wanderer or have the range or AoE, so there's a bit of balance there. And a major punch to the gut of his damage potential is his lack of AoE. Without his burst, Risley is basically only going to be hitting one enemy at a time, so even weaker cryo characters can end up doing more damage than he can if they can deal AoE damage. For example, if you have a cryo character that only does 50% of the damage that Risley does but can hit multiple enemies at once, all you need is to hit two enemies and that character will be doing the same damage as Risley. If you hit three enemies at once, they will be doing 50% more damage than him, and if you hit four enemies at once, then that character will end up doing 100% more damage than him. So while Risley has the potential for very high damage, his lack of AoE is a big detriment. Risley's support capability is bad. He is meant to be an on-field damage character, and if Risley is not on field, then he does not contribute to the team. All of his passives enhance his own damage and no one else's, so you have to build a team totally around him if you want to make use of his ability. Risley's team flexibility is good. Risley basically has two teams he can run, Freeze and Reverse Melt. Most people will likely have an easier time building Freeze teams, but Bennett and Shangling or even Toma Nihita Burning Melt teams are still an option for him. And there's a variety of ways to build these different types of teams, so as long as you have some off-field pyro or hydro applicators, you'll be golden. Risley's free-to-play friendliness is okay to good. His best team options will be Freeze and Reverse Melt, and luckily there are a variety of characters that make up those teams. For weapons, he really appreciates 5-star Catalysts just because they're giant stat sticks, but you can craft the Fontinian Catalyst, the Flowing Purity, which is a high base attack 4-star Catalyst with attack percent substats, and it also increases elemental damage, which makes a pretty good 4-star offensive catalyst option if you don't have something like the Skyward Atlas or Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds. Honestly, one of the biggest downsides to Risley is that he is an on-field DPS character that is already in some competition with some really good cryo DPS characters that exist already. Risley's overall rating is good. He's a solid on-field cryo DPS that can hit hard, but his lack of AoE is a real concern. This downside appears even worse when characters like Ayaka and Ganyu exist and both do much better AoE damage than Risley. And while Risley's burst is an AoE, Ayaka's burst is still an absurdly strong attack that does over three times the talent damage that Risley's does. It's also important to consider that it's a lot harder to buff the damage of Freeze teams since they don't really want to run characters like 
Bennett, and using Bennett in reverse melt teams confines you in a circle that Risley probably will not be able to stay in very long, as he has to get up close and personal with enemies that are often pretty spread out. However, if you like him already, you probably won't be overly disappointed with him, but if you're on the fence, I suggest wishing for someone else, especially if you want a really good cryo DPS. Recommended teammates for Risley include Bennett, Shangling, Kazuha, Sucrose, Xingqiu, Yolan, Diona, Layla, or any other team members that work for Freeze, Reverse Melt, or Burning Melt. And with that, the gradings are finished. So who should you wish for? Well, in this patch, 3 out of the 4 limited 5 stars are on-field DPS characters, and 1 is a support character who can deal as much damage as some DPS characters. And that support character just so happens to be Venti, who is still one of the best animo characters in the game. If you don't have Kazuha or Sucrose, I'd say Venti is the clear choice as the best 5 star for your Primo gems, and if you already have Sucrose or Kazuha, or if you don't have them but plan to wish for Kazuha, I still think Venti is a really good choice, since you often really appreciate having two really amazing animo supports for the Abyss. But if Venti is not for you, and you already have Sucrose or Kazuha, then the DPS options are also good choices. I think Nervalite has a slight advantage because he has a little bit better AoE, he has more team combinations than Hu Tao or Risley, and he's still very free to play friendly and easy to build. However, I don't think any of these DPS characters are necessarily a bad choice, but if I did have to rank them, my personal rankings for the best picks in 4.1 would be number 1, Venti, number 2, Nervalite, number 3, Hu Tao, and finally at the bottom, number 4, Risley. Now I know that some people are wondering if they should wish in patch 4.1 because they're going to be waiting for the Hydro Archon, and if past patterns hold up, then she will be coming in patch 4.2 right after this one. But this is not confirmed, it's just an educated guess. So if you want to wish for the Hydro Archon and one of these characters, you're going to have to make a choice on which one you want more because it's unlikely that you'll get both unless you're lucky and you win some 50-50s. Luckily, patch 4.1 will give us a lot of Primo Gems and Wishes, about 100 for free-to-play players over the entire patch. However, this calculation assumes that players are 36 starring the Abyss every rotation, getting all of the achievements, finding all of the chests in the new areas, and so forth. And I know that doesn't happen, so realistically I expect most players to earn about 70% of these possible Primo Gems and Wishes, or about 70 Wishes in total. So unless you've already been saving Primo Gems for a while, I don't think you'll have enough to guarantee the Hydro Archon if she comes out in patch 4.2 as expected. But if you're still not sure about who you want, and no one in patch 4.1 is a character that you just fell in love with, wait until about 10 days before the patch is over for the patch 4.2 livestream. We'll get info on the upcoming 5 stars and the 4 stars that are coming out that patch, and if you happen to like them more, then you can wish for them. And if not, you'll still have time to wish at the end of patch 4.1 for Venti or Risley. I hope this review has been helpful and clarified the value of certain characters for you, Make sure to drop a like and sub if it did, and also please let me know which characters you're going for, and don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch to ask for my shark blessing. 50% of the time, it works 100% of the time. I love you, stay jawsome, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.